Welcome back to Uprising. I'm Sonali Kohatkar. You can now subscribe for direct access to all our shows online at youtube.com slash uprising with Sonali. Your subscription sustains the TV production of Uprising. Well, it's that time of the year again. On Sunday, all American residents, except those living in the states of Arizona and Hawaii, will have to turn their clocks an hour forward for daylight savings and artificially retrain their bodies to shift schedules because well, most of us don't really know why. Something to do with farmers saving energy? It turns out daylight savings actually poses a serious public health risk. The widespread sleep deprivation resulting from the practice on the Monday after clocks are turned forward is linked to significantly higher numbers of car accidents, heart attacks, and more. For parents of small children, the added burden of readjusting sleep times twice a year can multiply the stress. What's more, it turns out the energy savings argument doesn't hold up when studied. So why do we continue to do it? Michael Downing is my guest. He's the author of seven books, two plays, and numerous essays and stories, including his 2009 book, Spring Forward, The Annual Madness of Daylight Savings Time. He joins me on the phone now. Welcome to Uprising, Michael. I'm happy to join you. Well, first, can you answer a question for me that has plagued me for ages, but I have not found a satisfying answer to. In the summer, we naturally get more sunlight. The sun rises earlier. It sets later anyway, just because of the Earth's orbit around the sun. So why are we setting our clocks forward to get more daylight during a time of the year when we already naturally get more daylight? Well, here's the deal. We really weren't trying to get more daylight, although Congress, every time it increases the period of daylight saving, does tell us it's going to give us more sunshine. The problem is we have a limited amount of sunshine. It's dictated by nature, as you say. But the proponents of daylight saving early in this century noticed that people were sleeping through sunrise. That is, when William Willett was riding his horse through central London, he noticed that at five o'clock in the morning the sun was up, but the British had their shades pulled. And he thought if you turn the clock forward, instead of sleeping through that hour of sunshine, if you gave it to them in the evening, they would spend it outdoors. So it was really a reapportionment program more than an actual generating of more daylight program.